Look upon the face of your Son, and for love of him, who is the eternal High Priest, have pity on your priests. Remember, most compassionate God, that they are but weak and frail human beings. Stir up in them the grace of their vocation, which is in them by the imposition of the bishop's hands. Keep them close to you, lest the enemy prevail against them, so that they may never do anything in the slightest degree unworthy of their sublime vocation. O Jesus, I pray for your faithful and fervent priests, for your unfaithful and tepid priests, for your priests laboring at home or abroad in distant mission fields, for your tempted priests, for the lonely and desolate priests, for your young and elderly priests, for your sick and dying priests, for the souls of your priests in purgatory. But above all, I commend to you the priests dearest to me, the priest who baptized me, the priests who absolved me from my sins, the priests at whose masses I assisted, and who gave me your body and blood in holy communion, the priests who taught and instructed me, or helped and encouraged me, all the priests to whom I am indebted in any way. O Jesus, keep them all close to your heart, and bless them abundantly in time and in eternity. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Welcome to our celebration of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Today is Wednesday within the octave of Easter. Our presider is Reverend Father Anjo. Please stand.
in the name of father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god and the communion of the holy spirit be with you all and with your spirit good afternoon brothers and sisters good afternoon father welcome to today's celebration of god's love and mercy as we offer all our intentions at this altar let us ask god to open our hearts so that we may have deep experience of the eucharistic lord let us acknowledge our sins or to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries i confess so mighty god and, and to you, you my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that, that i have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what i have done and in what i have, have failed to do through my fault through my fault through my most grievous fault therefore you ask blessed mary ever virgin all the angels and saints and to you my brothers and sisters to pray for me to the lord our god may almighty god have mercy on us forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life amen lord have mercy lord have mercy christ have mercy christ have mercy lord have mercy lord have mercy let us pray o god who gladden us year by year with the solemnity of lord's resurrection graciously grant that by celebrating these present festivities we may merit through them to reach eternal joys through our lord jesus christ your son who lives and reigns with in the unity of the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter and John were going up to the temple area for the three o'clock hour of prayer, and a man crippled from birth was carried, 
and placed at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate, every day to beg for alms from the people who entered the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for alms. But Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. He paid attention to them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarian, Christ, and walk. Then Peter took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles grew strong. He leaped up, stood, and walked around, and went into the temple with them, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the one who used to sit begging at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with amazement and astonishment at what had happened to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, invoke his name, make known among the nations his deeds, sing to him, sing his praise, proclaim all his wondrous deeds. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Glory in his holy name, rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength, seek to serve him constantly. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham and by his oath to Isaac. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleophas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem? who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days. He, and he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, 
before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And beside all these, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then the sum of those with us who went to the tomb and found things just as the woman had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophet spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on further. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at the table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were open, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven, and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we heard several times after the resurrection of the Lord, these disciples, two of them, they were going to Emmaus. And the story is titled as The Experience of the Disciples at Emmaus, Emmaus Experience. What is the real experience of Emmaus? What they really experienced? To save their physical life by seeing the terrible death of their master, they were running away from Jerusalem. As per the teachings of Luke, in the Gospel of Luke, we see Jerusalem always as the holy place because of the temple that was situated there. People were coming to offer their worship there. But then on the last week, what had happened was terrible things for their understanding. Their own master was crucified. For them, he was considered, Jesus was considered as the redeemer for them. But then they lost hope in him because he died on the cross and they saw the terrible death. To save their life, they were running away from Jerusalem. Jerusalem being a represented place of heavenly kingdom. Going away from Jerusalem is like we are going from the God's presence to the darkness. So in a way to save their physical life, at least for that matter, they were running away. But their heart was always there in Jerusalem. That's why on the way, they were discussing about the same things, what had happened before. Into that discussion, Jesus joined as a stranger to them. And they looked at him when he asked, what are you talking about? As if he knows nothing, they started to explain the things. But then Jesus started to explain how it was planned by God the Father, how it was made by the prophecies, and how it has been taken place 
in these days after reaching to their destination they wanted to get into their home but being in the evening jesus wanted to continue his journey but then the stranger becomes a guest to them they asked the stranger to stay with them and jesus accepted the invitation and became guest to them and then the time came when he broke the bread the guest became again host to them and he opened their eyes by breaking the bread there are two things happened in this journey all together it was firstly the breaking of the word of god secondly it is the breaking of the bread itself jesus himself gave to them that opened their eyes what happened was when they took participation in these two breaking of activities they had the conversion they changed their mind even to suffer no matter whatsoever they wanted to go back they went back to jerusalem this experience is called emmaus experience understanding our life, life situations whenever we see some struggles tensions worries sufferings coming out coming to us we may always have a tendency to face it by ourselves taking our own decisions moving away from god acting upon our own decisions and wills but then god reminds us for all your problems for all your sufferings for all your struggles there is solution in the word of god in the blessed sacrament god is calling us to stay with him so that he can become the source and strength or in all our worries struggles so that we may face everything together with him to overcome him because he had already overcome him and he has expressed the victory even over the death and that we celebrate in these days let us pause for a moment in silence ask ourselves where do i find out consolation where do i find out my comfort when i am facing struggles temptations worries sufferings is it that i am turning to god who is calling us calling me to be with him so that he can strengthen us understand eucharist is the source and summit of our christian life and we have given god himself to be present us through the blessed sacrament when there are struggles tensions worries that is coming to us let us turn to god who is making himself available through the word of god and the eucharist and when we find out peace in him and that peace is always offered even after the re- the resurrection jesus word and promise offer was peace be with you let us pause for a moment in silence let us ask god to help us to deepen our faith in the eucharistic lord and the word of god amid their questions and difficulties jesus the divine warfare walk with the disciples to make them understand that the messiah must first suffer before he enters his glory enlightened by him we pray stay with us o lord stay with us o lord lord let your words make our hearts burn within us drawing us out of darkness of sorrow and despair and awakening in us the desire to remain with you we pray stay, stay with, with us lord let us draw to the table of the word so that the sacramental signs of the eucharist may become more alive and effective we pray stay, stay with, with us lord may we pass from the light of the word to the light streaming from the bread of life the supreme fulfillment of your promise to be with us always We pray stay with us Lord partaking of your body and blood may we set out immediately to share the joy of the resurrection with our brothers and sisters especially with those in need of comfort and assurance we pray 
Stay with us, Lord. May you continue to walk by our side to lead us to a deeper understanding of the mysteries of God in the joys and sorrows of our lives. We pray. Stay, Stay with, with us, us Lord. Lord. Let us now pray in silence for our personal intentions. We pray. Stay, Stay with, with us, us Lord. Lord. Father, may our encounter with the risen Lord become more intensified and deepen in the Eucharist where we recognize him in the breaking of the bread. Amen. Amen. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God Almighty, Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice which has redeemed the human race, and be pleased to accomplish in us salvation of mind and body, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly really right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all time to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to love you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is true lamb who has taken away the sin of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalt in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, Lord, found of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took chalice, once more giving thanks he gave to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you Lord the bread of life and chalice of salvation giving thanks to the held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the holy spirit remember lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to fullness of charity together with francis our pope jose our bishop and all the clergy remember also brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy welcome them into the light of your face of mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed virgin mary mother of god with the blessed joseph her spouse with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages we may merit to be coherent to eternal life may praise and glorify you through your son jesus christ through him and with him and in him god almighty father in the unity of the holy spirit all glory and honor is yours forever and ever At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of savior jesus christ for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever lord jesus christ your apostles peace i leave you my peace i give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who will and reign forever and ever amen the peace of the lord be with you always and with your spirit let us offer each other the sign of peace lamb of god you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. but only say the word and my soul shall be healed Thank you. 
let us pray we pray o lord that the reverence reception of the sacrament of your son may cleanse us from our old ways and transform us into new creation through christ our lord amen please kneel and together let us pray the prayer for peace Lord Jesus, we come to you in our need. Create in us an awareness of the massive forces of conflict that threaten our world today and grant us a sense of urgency to activate the forces of goodness, of justice, of love, and of peace. Where there is armed conflict, let us stretch out our arms to our brothers and sisters. Where there is abundance, let there be simple lifestyle and sharing. Where there is poverty, Let there be dignified living and constant striving for just structures. Where there is selfish ambition, let there be humble service. Where there is injustice, let there be atonement. Where there is despair, let there be hope in the good news. Where there are wounds of division, let there be unity and wholeness. Help us to be committed to the building of your kingdom, not seeking to be cared for but to care, not expecting to be served. but to place ourselves in the service of others not aspiring to be materially secure but to place our security in your love teach us your spirit for it is only in loving imitation of you lord that we can discover the healing springs of life that will bring about new birth to our earth and hope for the world amen our lady queen of peace pray, pray for, for us. us please stand The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.